Hi guys, welcome to this session in Microsoft Excel. In this module, I want to show you how you can create a graph that will automatically update when you enter new data. So on the screen, I've got some gas and electric figures. What I've got here is a list. So this is what I would be filling in when I get new records. When I add a new line of data there for October 22, this graph will pick it up because this data is looking at this list. So at the moment it's going down to September. So you've got September 21 to September 22. But if I just highlight this, pull it down, I get October coming in. I'll just change the figures so you can see how it works. So you saw straight away the graph picked that up. So it's going from October to October. So this is working because I'm using the offset function with the count a function to always give me the last 12 months. Well, it says 13 there, but the offset function, I'll show you how that works in a second. So that'll say 12 all the way down to one, coming in off one. The reason that's not zero is because there's a label at the top there. But that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna show you how I did that. So let's get rid of all this stuff. I'll leave the titles there and just delete that and delete that so first of all how the offset function works so the offset function will allow you to offset a cell reference by a number of rows or columns so if i want to offset from a1 i would type this equals offset which is a function name open the bracket a1 so that's my starting point and then how many rows do I want to go? So if I want to go down one row, one row, comma, no columns. Let's just do that one, see what happens. It comes with Jan 20, which is one row down. Now I don't obviously want the top one. I want the bottom one and going up to 12 months back. So if it's October, I want October 21 to October 22. If it's September, I want September 21 to September 22. So I can't just leave the offset like this. So what I'm going to use, instead of 1, the figure 1, I'm going to use the count A function. Now let's have a quick look at what that does. So if I go just down here for a minute, equals count A. And I'm just going to count the whole of column A. So count A counts whether there's any information in a cell or not. So I just close the bracket on that. Let's tick that. Comes back with a date because I'm in a date column. But if I just put that back to general, there's 35 items in that list, including the top one. So if I drop that down and highlight that lot, down here we've got count 35. You can see it there. So that's correct. That's what the count A function will do. If I add anything underneath that, it just starts adding it up because there's something in that cell, the letter R. Yeah. I'll just delete that off. It's back to 35. So what I'm going to do is do the offset function with the count A, and then I've got a minus how many months back I want. So let's just show you that one. So equals offset, open the bracket. Still looking at A1 on this one, A1 comma but now i'm going to put the count a function instead of the row number and then click on column a so it'll count all of column a and i want to come back minus 13 comma zero for the columns and then close the bracket on there let's see what it comes back with there let's just tick that one so it's coming back with that now i've got conditional formatting on this column these three columns actually just if it equals whatever's there, just to colour it up. So you can see that minus 13 is giving me that date, which is what I want. And I want it to compare month on month. So basically we, we look, we can see how, how much more or less we paid in October this year to last year. Now I need to pull that across. So this next column needs to look at B1 and C1. So let's just pull that over. Now it's picking up the format as a date, so I'll just highlight those two and put it back to money. So 54, 46, that's worked fine. Now, obviously, I need to pull this down as well. 
So I'm going to need to dollar sign A1 because dollar, I need dollar, the A1 to be locked. And then I need to pull it down 12 months. And I need to do the same for B1. Dollar sign, pull that down. And then obviously I'm going to have to change the minus number for each one of these. F4, pull that down. So I've locked that. So just to show you what I mean, so this first one is saying minus 13, so this next one needs to say minus 12. I'll just do this one and then I'll pause it while I do the rest. Minus 12, minus 12. And let's just check, that's picked up November, which is correct. 55.97, 55.97. 13086. So that's picking that up. And now I need to repeat the process for the rest of this, which I'll just do um, while I pause this. I've now done that. So the last one is to say minus one, which is picking up the last entry. So if I add a new entry, so if I go November or November dash 22, that should pick that one up. So it's gone to November 22, and if whatever I put in there, that will pick it up. And then just format those two to pounds, as you can see there. So that is a dynamic little list. It's always going to give you the 13 months, the comparison that month and this one. What you then do is just highlight that data, create yourself a little graph. So just go for a 2D column chart. Push it into position, too far. Expand it if you need to. And give it a title, gas and electric. Spend, gas and electric spend. So you've got your little graph there. And as you keep adding things at the bottom, so December 22, and Assume it goes up a lot. You can see how that's picking that up. So we've got December last year in comparison to this year. If only that was true, because it's lower. Well, the gas is higher, but the electric is lower. So that's just a very quick video how you can create a dynamic graph where it automatically updates when you input the data. So hopefully, hope you found that useful. Thank you for your time. I'll catch you in the next one.